Welcome to Paradelphia. This is Rick Pruitt coming to you live from week seven of the never ending quarantine. I'm here uh, at my home and I am joined by, as you can see, Toxic Mike there in the Toxic Studios. My green screen is doing something weird to my teeth. Your, your teeth are part of the green screen now. My, that, does that mean my teeth are fucking green? You look like that. You look like that dirty rapper. What's his name? Uh, uh, Takashi six nine. Which one are you talking about? No, Malone. I'll take it. Post, Post Malone. Post Malone. That guy, guy looks horrible. The guy who doesn't bathe. But <laughs> people, people, literally, girls swoon over them. Oh, I know. Oh I, my I can't explain god, that. I can't explain it. And I always, I always uh, talk to the girls, my my girls that are friends that that are all about him, and I send them the most horrible pictures of him and they're like <laughs> that's a, a bad representation of him and i'm like that's him yeah that's that's, him. that's really just him yes but you can't smell a picture you know oh my god smell <laughs> remember that back in the day jesus christ scratch and sniff? smell a vision scratch a sniff smell a vision smell a vision they talked about that forever yeah do they do scratch and sniff anymore i guess with candles and stuff like know. that yeah, I was at a, I, back in the day, I was at a place uh, in Baltimore Harbor. This is when I was like 15. And there was a place down there called, I think it was called the factory or something like that. It was sort of a cross between Edmund Scientific and Franklin Institute. Right. And it was it was all about like, um, it was almost like steampunk stuff, like industrial stuff. And they had this one uh, movie screen, which was like this interactive room. You could go in and sit and watch a movie. And it was uh, the chairs would would move. The smells of what was on the screen would be wafting through the theater. It was pretty cool. It was like all sensory. Really? Yeah. It was that neat, sounds like was something that would be a Disney World. Well, yeah, yeah. It was like pre Disney. Yeah. Pre. Was, How old are you again? Five hundred and eight. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the that's the rub with all this. Rick uh-huh. has been around for hundreds of years. You just I'm didn't like, know it. I'm like Lestat the Vampire. I don't even know who that is. Jesus Christ, dude. You're not that much older than me. The, uh, what was that called? Damn, that book. Uh, oh, that's right. With, you read. You're one of Tom, those readers. It was a movie, too. Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt. Uh, I don't know. One of the people in the chat room will know. Interview with a Vampire. Interview there with a Vampire. You, oh, oh, who watches that? That's a girl's movie. Eh, it was all right. I watched it a while back. <laughs> hey, Jen. <laughs> hey, Laura. Hey, everybody else that's joining the chat room. Go ahead and remember to uh, like and share the post and uh, join in the comments. We'll be able to post your comments up in the uh, live feed of the show. And this is going out to Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. So hello, all of you social media people. And hello welcome to the interwebs. And if you have all those accounts, go ahead and share uh, to all of those media outlets. Let people yeah. know that we're here. Absolutely. So, so tonight... Uh, I came up with a topic that's going to be kind of sort of topical. Okay. Um, as you guys probably have heard a billion times over the last, it's it's only honestly only been over the last maybe five, six years. The first week of May has a day that has been it's, dubbed as wait, wait, Star it's, Wars Day. Oh, I thought you were going to go with uh, 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 Justin Timberlake's no, It's Going to Be May. Not that dumb. Not, mean. not that one. Not that no. one. But the Star Wars Day thing. What's up, Supreme? Ah, uh, uh, May, May the fourth, fourth be, with be with you. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought, well, let's play off of that. Uh, and one of the interesting things I've I've read over the years um, about the Star Wars movies was the fact that when when George Lucas wrote those movies, um, he was writing them back at a time when he was very much involved in. He was living in San Francisco and he was very much involved in the hippie movement back in the early to mid seventies. Okay. And part of that movement, part of that whole lifestyle was just having this idea of um, energy and how you exude energy and you absorb energy. And the fact that you can change uh, the world around you based on the energy you give off. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what started the whole idea of the force in the star Wars movies. Yeah. Um, so what I was going to do tonight was talk a little bit about the origins of that, as far as, uh, the beginnings of the, of the movie version of that. But there's also been a lot of talk about how that might not just be fiction, right? That might actually be something. And we've talked about this on the show. We haven't, we haven't really talked about it in terms of star Wars and the force, 
but we've talked about the way you can actually change your environment around you based on your thoughts, your actions, and the energy you give off. And that's really all it is. It's really what the force is, so well, to and, speak. Yeah, and I've I've said before how you know that is one thing I could totally buy into is people's energy, and somebody walks into a room or. You, you walk into it, you could walk into your room yourself and just feel the energy that comes right. off of people, whether it be good, bad, indifferent, just whatever it is, you could definitely feel that. Right, right. So uh, that's going to be our general topic uh, going into the show here. We're going to be joined shortly, probably after the first break by uh, Jenna B. She is mm-hmm. a little little late coming, uh, coming home. I think she was walking her uh, Mugwai dog or something. That little Mugwai. <laughs> And she didn't even know what a mugwai was last week. God, I wonder, if she, I wonder if she watched Gremlins by now. You know she didn't. She's quarantined. No. She's not watching. She's waiting to go to the beach. Yeah, we got to we we talk bring, about that. We got to bring back the um the 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 uh, thing that we did prior to the quarantine with uh, Jen watching the movie. Remember, you gave her the trauma yeah. movies. Jen, yeah, I gave her. Well, the last one I gave her, which we never got her to review. It was Jenna B reviews B horror movies. I forget how we said Jenna's, it. Jenna's B's. Jenna's B's. Yeah. And I gave her uh traumas. Uh um um Jesus Christ, it just it was, I had it. Tromeo and, and, Tromeo and, Tromeo and Juliet, yeah. which is one of my absolute favorites, Tromeo and Juliet. <laughs> Literally, if if you're anybody out there that likes B horror, and it has to be B horror, because if this is the epitome <clears> of B horror. Definitely not A horror. They they definitely um, have sex with pickles in this movie. <laughs> um, that is a thing. Ron Jeremy is in it, so you better be prepared for that. Wow. Um, yeah, but uh, it is based around the uh, tro- uh, Ro- Romeo and Juliet story, but it's Romeo and Juliet, and it's definitely a good watch if you're into that. And I would have loved to have heard jenna's uh take on it but yeah we should definitely bring that back because she's got more time to watch these movies uh, absolutely well she still has the movie she has that dvd that you gave her right yeah i gave her i gave her the yes kids the dvd DVD, yeah the kids now i get that now my generation gets to look at kids and go yeah the dvd like the older generation used to go eight track yes it was a I, thing i saw a, a meme the other day talking about generation x which is my generation being the only generation that actually knows how to uh, set the timer on a VCR. <laughs> do because you our though? Parents, our parents couldn't do it, and I don't think anybody younger than us can do it. Huh? Do I know? Yeah, it's been a long time, but I, you, I would still I be was, able to figure that out. I was never over anybody's house who had their uh, their VCR time set. It was always blinking. Nah, you just set the time. Nobody that way you get the, that. that way you get the right time. I don't know. You want to record those movies on time? Oh, if you Hit well, no, no, no. You were then. You were in the. Uh, sophisticated household that knew how to set it and to set it at, to start at a certain time laser disc. I only remember from school mm-hmm. when we'd go to watch a movie, they'd come out with the giant laser disc. Right. The other thing I remember from laser disc was with Roger rabbit. Um, they, there was this myth that at one point you could cause it with laser disc, you freeze frame. It was the first I think time I know where you're going that. with this, but go ahead. Yeah. There was a point where if you froze it at a certain uh, timestamp, you got to see uh, Jessica Rabbit with her skirt up, with her <laughs> with her dress up. And I remember back in the day on it was probably AOL American America Online dial up, yep. um, trying awful to find the, trying to find the scanned pictures of the laser disc. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to go buy a laser disc player. I was a kid. Yeah, but wouldn't wouldn't that be online now? You figure if you pulled up like a Google image or something. I be, I have not looked this up in a while, but you know what, Rick? <laughs> Let's look this up. That's it's really a, not uh, what the show's about. But what the hell, right? It, it isn't what the you know what we started off with uh, some random stuff. We'll get back to the main topic. Yeah, we'll I know get, you guys are here for some. We'll it's a, it's, a, it's a winding road. Every week it's a winding road. On it this is show. a winding road. Um. Uh. Updress, I guess. Is that how you do it? Updress. It's going to give me some weird, <laughs> weird. I'm trying to figure out how to use Google. This, this is a low point for the show. You, Mike's literally trying to Google an updress of a cartoon character. Is it a low point? I think there's been other low points. <laughs> so I found one, and I be, this isn't the one I remember. The one you remember. I remember I looked this up a long time ago, but I'll go for this one. Maybe this was it. This is not. It must have been false then. 
Because this is what, wait, let me, there, that's what I'm getting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm getting that or this. It must have been. Can you see that one? Maybe I'm bringing it up large. Oh, this is go. a very good picture. It's even taking uh, time like AOL yeah. Messenger used to. Yeah. That can't be what I was excited about. And you and you have to know that, that uh, the editor knew that was in there, the film editor. He knew. Right, but I remember it as a kid not being underwear, though. Maybe that was. It was I'll just your it, imagination, Mike. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. As a kid, um, maybe that was way more exciting than anything else <laughs> I'd seen at that point. That was Mike's first porn, just like a rabbit. But you got to remember, I mean, something like that and how I remember it, how long ago was that, uh, bringing it back to the, the show's kind of topic, how long ago was that image of Bigfoot that they found when he was like in mid walk, which they debunked a long a, a time afterwards. The, How the long Patterson ago film? was the one, which the one, one in the, the one woods? where he's like, yeah, the one in the woods, it's a blurry picture. They, of him, that like, wasn't debunked. I thought that was debunked. No. There's that's, if anything, that's been proven to be more authentic than anything. They can't debunk that, but that was done in a uh, 67. I want to say I could have sworn here we go. I found it. And of course, that's I mean, there's true. people that have claimed it's been debunked, but the truth of the matter, is, yeah, that's the one. But the truth of the matter is, they they've looked at that a million different ways in terms of um, the way that the hair and the muscles move and everything. And they said if that is a person in a suit, they did some kind of a job that was like decades beyond what was available back in the '60s. Really? Yeah. I'm it, not going to do the research right now because nobody wants to watch us do research. <laughs> but I 100% thought that that was debunked. If, if you guys want to hear a good, uh, I, I always love to give um, shout outs to shows that, that are, you know, same paranormal type of shows, but I think they're quality shows. I think I've mentioned this before. There's a, there's a uh, podcast called Astonishing Legends. Um, they're out of, uh, well, one guy's out of California. The other one's out of, um, I think it's North Carolina. Uh, they do. If you like, we kind of just brush by topics on this show. These guys do deep, 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 deep dives into these topics. Like sometimes they'll spend four or five episodes on a show, or I'm sorry, on a topic. And they did a series on that Patterson Gimlin film, the one you're talking about. It was probably, I think it was at least three episodes. And they like got way deep. They talked to people, they talked to experts in the field, they talked to costuming experts, they talked like everybody they could get a hold of. And that was not by any means debunked if anything it goes the other way was so, Loch- yeah. so jen just discussed uh brought up Loch Ness. was that ever debunked i thought that one uh was. it depends on which one the, the original um the one they the original the, the surgeon's photo the one from the like 20s this one yeah that that was debunked that photo was debunked that photo was debunked yeah the, the whole idea was not debunked but that photo was yeah how is an idea not debunked but the photo is debunked because there's still other people that claim to have seen it okay. separate from this photo. So as long as there's people, a good, a good amount of people that all agree to have seen it, we're going to say it's not. Well, work. yeah. I mean, it's, you I know, know, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's, it's a matter of, uh, I guess your opinion at this point, based on the information, but I don't know that much about as much about that one as I, I haven't heard as much about that one as I heard about the Bigfoot thing, but my opinion, Bigfoot, I feel is less likely only because again, it's above ground. So when you go below ground into the seas, there is some messed up stuff down there, especially like we're always discover- discovering oh, yeah. more stuff down in the ocean. The, the deeper we go, we still have not, we've only like uh, cracked a tiny bit of the ocean in terms of mm-hmm. what we have discovered like, down there. Literally like 5% of the ocean. Yeah, like literally like, yeah, that's exactly. Cause it, the, the ocean covers so much more than our land ever will. Mm-hmm. Um, the thought process of something living in the ocean, the seas, the lakes, that is quote unquote prehistoric or something that we've never seen before right. makes more sense to me than something that is on land. Now, we discussed last week, like um, the fox bats and all that kind of stuff. That shit to me is is crazy in itself um, to not have ever seen or captured a Bigfoot. If they do exist in any way, shape or form Mm. makes no sense to me, but the 
uh, Nessie, I could totally see that. Well, yeah, I, well, I can see both because you, even though it's above land or, or on land, um, <laughs> some of those forests are, are just like you can't imagine the density of those forests. Like you would, you could walk for days and not come across any kind of remote human habitation or roads or anything like that. So for something to, to live back in that area and, and not be detected, it wouldn't be that difficult. People aren't but, looking everywhere. <laughs> I agree for small, like, relatively smaller animals mm. not bigger like we're talking about in terms of a bigfoot you're talking about bigger than a gorilla bigger than the biggest gorilla tall like side like yeah. you know yeah. vertical wise right um that's where it, it it falls short with me but why would it matter how tall it is if it's in an area that people aren't like it's within hundreds of miles of of, of anybody <clears throat> who's going to set foot in the in the forest why would it being seven foot tall matter? It could seven be foot 90, tall, 90 feet tall and it wouldn't matter. <laughs> seven foot tall matters because animals, no matter who they are, what they are, have a tendency to not always stay in one spot. Now they stay in their own climate that they have to stay in. I get that. But right. these are supposed to be hairy, very hairy uh, uh, from head to toe, kind of like gorillas. Mm. Um beasts that are able to travel further distances i would imagine with their sizes than gorillas and at an easier and and swifter pace but you're assuming they're nomadic again i am i am but that's only because of tales that we've heard pictures we've seen this is what and, and footprints we've seen which speak to that like i've seen a lot of uh bigfoot um tales and, and 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 documentaries that speak to that knowledge that's what i'm going off of mm-hmm. so you would think that wherever they are they're traveling whether or not in quote herds or by themselves in a manner that would have revealed themselves by now well m- maybe that's and uh, maybe, again maybe and maybe you're not looking at this properly and and a lot of people aren't Maybe they aren't flesh and blood. Maybe they are interdimensional. See, Rick, you always take it that next level, that next step. Saying. And I'm with you. I'm with I'm you. Just saying it, it's and and I, uh, I bring that up. A... I bring that up. I segue that into what I want to talk about for a few minutes before we get into the main topic here. Got it. Um, I put a post up today, or I shared a post on um, Twitter. Uh, a few times in, in the past, we've talked about these. Uh, missing 411 cases, which are these missing person cases where people, a lot of times they're kids, a lot, sometimes they're adults, that they just literally disappear off the face of the earth. Um, they just don't have any trace of where these people are. They, It's almost like they just stepped out of the world because it happens so fast and so completely. And in a lot of cases, it, it's kids that, you know, if they're found, um, they're found literally like miles away a day or two later and they're like three years old. So how in the hell did a three-year-old travel miles in rough wooded terrain? You know what I'm saying? Like it's one of those those kind of things. So today there was a story that was posted on, uh, on Twitter by Dave Politis who wrote these four one one books. And it was a a story about a little boy up in uh, Canada on Wednesday. I believe this said, um, I'm not going to read this entire story, but basically the gist of the story is a three-year-old boy up in Nova Scotia was out in front of his grandmother's house. Um, <clears throat> there, the house is probably, I think they said it somewhere in the story. It was um, a few hundred yards from a river. So a few hundred yards. So call it four or five football fields. Right. Uh, from a river. The grandmother turned around to pay attention to the dog in the yard, which was doing something. She chained the dog up or something like that. But she said it was only for a few seconds. Turned back around, and this kid was gone. Absolutely gone. So they call in the search. They searched all day and night Wednesday uh, into this morning. And they didn't find sign of the kid, but they did eventually find his little rubber boots, his galoshes, um, in the river downstream. Now, very easy to say, well, I guess he ran off and f- fell and drowned in the river. 
<clears throat> but first off, if you look at these cases, very, very often, the shoes being off the body is a, uh, a recurring theme for some reason, for whatever reason, when these people are found, they're found with articles of clothing off or turned backwards. And a lot of times the, the shoes are what's missing or what's found. The only thing that's found. Um, and again, this kid being three years old and being literally hundreds of yards away from the river, if his grandmother turned around for a few seconds, this kid wouldn't have dr- run 400 yards in a few seconds. Right. Like he was three, <laughs> you know, so they still to this day haven't found this kid. Um, I wonder to this day, it was two days ago, but they still haven't found this kid as far as I know. Um, and Dave Politis is, is kind of chiming in on this saying, yeah, this is a very, very typical uh, 411 case uh, that he writes about. There was even a dog involved. And a lot of times they said there are dogs for whatever reason, there are dogs involved. There, there are, there, I, I watched the, um, on Amazon Prime, he has a couple of documentaries on a couple different of the, cases of these and on the one he talks about um i think it's hikers or hunters i think it's hunters um and on this documentary he lists these 12 bullet points and these are the 12 recurring themes of these cases they're almost always by a river uh they're almost always uh around four to five o'clock at night um the the clothing thing there's clothing often missing Dogs are often involved. Kids will like wander off with their dog and and be gone and they'll find the dog, but not the kid, things like that. So it's, yeah, it's, it's like of all the things we've talked about on this show over the years, this is literally the most terrifying thing to me. Like we've talked about a billion different things, but this is like real life shit where people were just like stepping out of the world. Right. And it's it's terrifying. Here's my question. Now, is it ever... Do they ever find these people? Because the story you're telling me reminds me a lot of certain things that used to be put on that old TV show, Unsolved Mysteries. Yeah. Do, they, do the people ever appear? Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Now, when the people appear, do they know what had happened? Because in Unsolved Mysteries, they used to have this thing. And I remember like it was, I was watching yesterday where it was like a guy or a girl on the side of the road. They call for they use a pay phone to call somebody to come pick them up. The person says, okay, I'm going to come pick you up. They wait for like five, 10 minutes. Then they call the person back again. Uh, You know, where are you at? I thought you were coming to get me. And the person says, I was there five hours ago. You weren't there. And the person says, I've been here, but I've only been here for like 10 minutes. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. It was like a whole thing. Like what happened to this person? They, They said they were there for only 10, 20 minutes, but it like seven, eight, 10, 24 hours have passed. Right. Yeah. That's it. That's. Yeah, uh, the time slip thing isn't something that's necessarily worked into these type stories, but I have heard those type stories before, and it is similar, uh, similar type of thing. Um, But yeah, sometimes they're found, and a lot of times the ones that are found uh, are children, and they're young children, so they really can't talk. There was a a talk about it. There was a, a case two or three years ago that got a lot of news coverage in, I think it was North Carolina. Remember the little kid, the little two or three year old kid that got lost overnight in like 20 degree weather and they found him. He was perfectly unharmed. He wasn't even wet. And he said that a bear helped him all night. A bear took care of him. So people were like, what bear? I mean, it it was, um, it was a hibernation season, right? So any bears that are out in hibernation season are going to be starving. That kid would be an appetizer. So a bear is not going to help the kid. So what bear, what is he talking about? Was he talking about an actual bear? Is he talking about a Bigfoot creature? Is he talking about a hairy person? Is he talking about like who? who, who? It was me. I hadn't shaved for a while, Rick, (laughs) and I appreciate you. I was in quarantine. Nobody was here to shave my back. I hate you. I know. (laughs) So those are just, you know, a couple uh, of, of examples, but these stories are, you know, every day, if you follow, if you get like he, he, Dave Politis has written, I think it's 11 or 12 books. Now he breaks it up into regions. He does East coast, West coast, uh, Canada. He does one. He did one on hunters. He did one on, um, oh, what the hell was it now? I forget what, he, there's a bunch of them. I can't remember all the different topics, but, um, but there's like a million stories. And these are all these, these stories where they're just, 
And he says he doesn't go after the ones that are typical. He doesn't go after the ones that could easily be dismissed. Right. He goes after the ones that are just like, there's no explanation. There's no logical explanation for. And even cutting out the ones that are just could be dismissed, he still has 12 books worth of material to write about. So that gives you an idea how often this is happening. That's so it's it's crazy. That kind of that kind of stuff uh freaks my mental state out a little bit more than stuff like yeah. Loch Ness Monster or or Bigfoot. But that, yeah. that kind of stuff is 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 weird. Because it's yeah, because it's 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 happening and no nobody knows what the hell's going on. That's yeah. that's the, the weird like when people label stuff like this is what's happening, I don't know, it kind of makes me go, I don't know. But when you're yeah. like, okay, nobody knows. Nobody's even taking a shot at what's going on here. Yeah. That's, well, I think, scarier. Well, the unknown. And, and one, and I, I've heard this theory, and you, you talk about our pot talk, so you might want to light up for this one. All right, let me get my doobie. <laughs> so what I've heard uh, as a, just a hypothetical, but it's it's an interesting idea. Right. Because you oftentimes you'll hear these stories about people who, have time slips kind of like you were just talking about. Um, but time uh, slips. Time slip for me is I get too drunk off whiskey <laughs> and I don't remember anything. And then the next day call somebody calls me up and goes, did you see Facebook? And I don't want to log on. Yeah. No, not that kind of time slip. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm talking about a time, time slip, like, like where you'll, um, you'll be driving down a road and you stop at a, at a, at a bar, have a drink, come back the other way the following day and the bar is not there anymore. Or you suddenly, find yourself walking down the street and you look around and you see cars look like they're from the 1950s for 20 or 30 seconds. Okay. And and then all of a sudden you kind of shake your head to look around again and it's back to normal again. Those kind of time slips. That's what people have talked about. So if those, if we go on the basis that that type of thing happens, that you can somehow some way slide back and forth through, through time. What if these people are, they have no idea that, that, that this has happened. It may have happened to you. It may have happened to me. And what I mean by that is you go on and you live your life and you're just living moment to moment in your life. But let's have, have you ever had something that happened in your life where you kind of like one day or one moment or a certain time, everything seems to kind of shift and change a little bit. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Everybody I, has I, those. I'm moments. with you. I mean, we all have, we all have moments like that. We all have deja vu moments. We all right. have, kind of weird moments where like what's going on right and we so, all have that yeah so if we're living a life life a let's say scenario right. a is life a and you're walking through the woods and you step through one of these portals time slip things whatever you want to call them you don't know a thing you're just walking on but you've walked into version b of your life which may be almost identical to version a with a few minor variations and maybe it's a little better. Maybe it's a little worse, right, but, you don't kn- but you don't know. Meanwhile, yeah. back, meanwhile, back in scenario a, you've disappeared off the face of the earth. Right. And people are looking for you and they have no idea where you are. You have no idea that this has even happened. You just go on with your life. <laughs> Told you should have lit, lit up. I'm, I'm going to, I'm, here, I'm gonna just go do some shots, and <laughs> we'll we'll just keep going with this. Next thing you know, <clears throat> Mike is passed out, and you just say he slipped into another dimension. <laughs> but no, I'm to- I'm totally with you, and and you, we all have those moments. The upside the up- down, the upside down, yes, kind of like that, kind of like that. And uh, Stranger Things, I I've had those moments. I mean, we all have, and uh, it, it's it's weird, and I I I truthfully believe that our mind going into the unconscious state. We talked about dreams before. Mm-hmm. I just had a weird ass dream uh, recently. Aliens. No, no, it was, it was my dad again. And um, it was my dad, but it was Howard Stern. <laughs> Ch- Howard Stern. Who was like wearing my dad as a suit. Really? So it was my dad who's been passed wow. away for many years now. Uh, but I was like, dad. And he was like, no, I'm Howard Stern. I just look like your dad. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? And we were living <laughs> in an apartment together. That's great. And somebody else was there. And I forget who it was. But I was like, you're Howard Stern. I love you. But you look like my dad. 
It was really weird. It's kind of like but Buffalo the, Bill. But so like to <laughs> me, um, these kind of like your brain being turned off to sleep slips you into weirder dimensions and mm-hmm. weirder things than your conscious brain could ever do. Does that make sense? Yeah. But even even though with a conscience conscious brain, I have had some of the things you're talking about, which is really fucking weird. And that freaks me out more than anything is to think of alternate dimensions, alternate timelines, mm-hmm. alternate this, because I can wrap my brain around it, but at the same time cannot. Right. Well, people sense. don't want to believe it. I mean, and, and I don't know that it's real. It's, you know, but, but um, what I will say is that, that science is slowly proving that there are multiple dimensions. Oh yeah. It's slowly now whether is. we can jump between them, that's another question that's entirely. Another question. But we're talking but, about like with wormholes and all this other stuff and black yeah. holes and yeah. yeah. So they're there, whether we can jump through them, who knows whether it's happening to us without our knowledge who knows who knows you know it's it's weird ass shit yeah all right well why don't we uh why don't we take our first break here and i know genevieve's probably home now waiting to uh she was in she was in the waiting room for a second i was gonna wait for a moment but she went away for she might be uh uh being attacked by her mogwai right now but she's no longer there walking the mogwai uh uh-huh all right so we'll take a break here and we'll come back in a few minutes and uh we'll have jen on and we'll start talking about our uh, theme of the night, which is uh, Star Wars theme and, and whether the force in Star Wars is an actual thing or not. So, yeah, we'll be right back. All right. We are back here on Paradelphia. And uh, is Jen, Jen did not uh, answer the call. She no, there is she right is. there. She there is. She is. All let's, right. Let's, uh, wait, she's muted herself. She's muted. Just when you thought. Uh-huh. Just when you thought, is that I a was, gun? <clears throat> I was whining people. What is whining that mean? people? Okay. Yes. So there's this thing in my in Salem County, the real South Jersey, that <laughs> you basically join this group on Facebook and people put like their addresses and you go and just it's called Sisterhood of the Traveling Wine or something like that. And you basically go drop off alcohol to their step. I have gotten three bottles of wine so far for free. And I just took three bottles to some random people's houses. So it was great. So why don't you just buy your own wine? Because it's fun. Like, it's the thought. Because, like, then with your wine, like, people (laughs) will leave you cute little notes and things. Like I spit in your wine? No, it's... (laughs) It ain't an open container. The wine... Laura says the wine fairy doesn't love me. Oh, yeah. Laura, send me your address, dude. I'm down for a drive. <laughs> we don't, have, we Wait, don't have a wine fairy up here. Is there a whiskey fairy? Because I'm down with that. <laughs> yes, there's there's a guys group in Salem County. It's called something else where they send each other like hard liquor or beer. I'll the take brotherhood the, of the, the brotherhood of the traveling whiskey. Whiskey yeah. <laughs> of bad decisions. Bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> is that a Guns N' Roses shirt uh, Jenna is wearing? It is. Oh, wow. Yep. You would know who they are? I know who they are. Bed of Roses is like my bop. Bed of Roses? That was bop. Bon Jovi. Bop, bop, oh. bop. Seriously? She said it's her it bop. A, it's her bop. She can't even no. name a song. <laughs> no, they sing. They sing. Um. Um, um, oh my gosh, that song. That's about... Jen has been drinking a lot of wine. It, oh, uh, hold on. I'm going to think of that song. And I'll let y'all know. <laughs> yeah, let, let us know. All right. In the meantime, while Jen's thinking. Well, she's, yeah, it'll take a little bit. While she's thinking. Uh, so let's get to the topic at hand here. So as I mentioned at the top of the show, uh, we're going to talk a little bit tonight about the, what's being called in, in the Star Wars movies, the force. All right, and everybody kind of um, when that movie came out, what forty whatever years ago now. Jesus, um, yeah, it's been a it's while. Great. Just uh, kind of took that as a fictional uh, plot device to move that story along. All right, which was and it was a cool thing. It was something that was unique uh, to that movie and to that genre of movies uh, that wasn't really seen before. It was very metaphysical. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, there you go. May the fourth be with you. Um, and it was something that, that was just kind of not really thought about other than just being part of that, uh, that whole, um, I guess you could say it a dogma or, or whatever you, whatever, I'm not sure what right. the word is, but the, the idea phenomenon. behind the phenomenon of the movies. Uh, but over the years, um, it's kind of been looked at a little more scientifically. And there's been some question thrown out there as to whether or not George Lucas was actually onto something when he created this or wrote this. Right. Um, so if you look at the, the, the Wikipedia definition of this, um, it, what it says is that it's a, the force is a metaphysical and ubiquitous power in the star Wars movies. It's wielded by force sensitive characters throughout the franchise. Heroes like the Jedi who become one with the force while the Sith and other villains exploit the force to bend it to their will. Uh, the force has been compared to different, uh, several aspects of different world religions. Uh, and of course the phrase may the force be with you has become very popular. Yeah. Uh, you know, May prevalent the fourth. In pop culture may the fourth yeah. so when he created this movie when when as i mentioned at the beginning of the show when george lucas was writing star wars back in the mid 70s he was living out in san francisco and that was an area of the country that was very much into the hippie movement uh hey asbury and all that stuff was very much still in in play out there and so when he wrote the idea of the force, it wasn't such a strange idea to him or to the people, I guess that he was living around at the time. Uh, but to the rest of the world, it was pretty much a, a, a new age idea that was not really considered. Is he given the finger? Sorry. Who? <laughs> Who are you, Are you about? serious, Jenna? Yoda was given the finger. Oh, he's using the force. That's why I brought it up. He's he using the, the force. Finger. Yeah. He's using the force to F you off. <laughs> what the fuck? What the hell just happened? This this is this is Jen drunk. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's using the force to f you off. <laughs> so anyway, he. I'm created sorry. This. I'm sorry. I was bringing that up for the force. I didn't know it was going to go there. I'm sorry. Uh, I know. He, so he it created this basically anywhere. as a uh, another version of what what the Chinese will call the the, the key or or chi. Uh, basically a mystical life force that you have all around you. Um, right. If you ever go for um, acupuncture, it's the basis of acupuncture. You, you are energy, you have energy in your body and the pins they put in your body redirect the energy to where you need healing. Right. So, every, and, and everything and science has shown us everything is energy. No matter what it is, it's basically you are boiled down to, atoms and electrons and, and energy. So it's not Fred such a far been. flung idea when you think about the concept of your thoughts being just another form of energy. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. Um, <clears throat> so with, uh, with regard to, to this um, idea, you know, a lot of people in the world kind of looked at this, like it was a, an affront to religion. Because he was kind of taking, and and, really? and 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 George Lucas actually admitted to this. He said he wanted to put an aspect of religion in the movies without without God. So he wanted to have the idea behind religion without actually naming a particular religion. Really, he made that. I never heard that. I'm very yeah. surprised. So so and which he did. It was very successful because if you think about it what the force entails is basically if you look at any kind of religion, it's, it's prayer, it's belief, it's, you know, you, you name it, whatever religion you're talking about, there's an aspect of this in it. Yeah. He's ugly. But he kind of just took the, the, the Godhead out of whatever religion you want to throw in there. Right. And just, and left all the, the, um, I guess the, what am I trying to say here? The, left everything else he left the physical no, no. right the, 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 of what the you can thought, do the thought of it which right. is if you, you think about the force yeah. the force is like everything around but you, if you've ever seen a star wars movie the force is everything around you it's a part of you it's outside of you it's it's always there it's whether right. or not you could channel the force yes so with that being said it's kind of like any kind of religious whatever way you want to look at it being always being there and if you could channel it correctly it helps you to achieve greatness 
So right. I could totally, I've never thought about it in that retrospect and that way of thinking. Cause I've never seen an interview with, with George Lucas that said this, which is kind of surprising to me. Cause I'm all about star Wars. I used to have, um, two giant, uh, 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 lightsabers on my wall, which I sold for rent one time because I was in my mid twenties, and that's what you what? did. Um, but to think about it in that way does make kind of sense. I could see where he kind of went and and wiggled around that way of thinking. Right. I don't like it, um, obviously, because I, I don't like to. I wouldn't want to watch a Star Wars movie. I mean, we already have movies where. Like like something like um, the Matrix, where mm-hmm. it became very Bible oriented, very um, religious oriented. I kind of don't want to have a religious thought process when you're um, entering into a a world of that magnitude, kind of thing, where mm-hmm. that doesn't exist. So I, right. I totally hear what you're saying. I don't like it but i i totally hear where you're coming from with that so there's a quote here from george lucas that was taken down during a production meeting for empire strikes back and he speaks to all this he said this is his quote now he says the act of living generates a force field and energy that energy surrounds us when we die that energy joins with all the other energy there is a giant mass of energy in the universe that has a good side and a bad side right we are part of the force because we generate the power that makes the force live when we die, we become part of that force. So we never really die. We continue as part of the force. And you see this in the movies, because if you think back to the movies, when characters like Obi-Wan Kenobi, um, uh, um, Luke Skywalker, uh, these, these characters die in the movie, they're not really gone because they'll come back in the form of a holographic image or a voice leading and directing the living characters in the movie. And that's kind of what he's talking about here is when you die, you don't really go away. And again, this is something we've talked about many different times. And we talked about it two weeks ago when Gene was here doing the readings. Right. Where you have your, um, your, uh, what does she call them here? Angel, uh, blanking on here, your spirit guides, spirit guides, your spirit guides that are basically in your ear and giving you direction, which comes through to you as your mental thoughts and your intuition. But it's according to what Gene's saying and a lot of other uh, people who have psychic and medium abilities, <clears throat> that is your spirit guides. That is your deceased, you know, grandfather or your deceased grandmother or your deceased dad or whoever it might be helping you and, and directing you in the right direction. And that's really all this is. You see the same thing in Star Wars movies. It's just made more science fiction ish in the science <clears throat> in the Star Wars movies. But essentially, it's the same thing, right? Now, here, here's my question to you: Yeah, you've you've seen Star Wars movies, have you? Are you a Star Wars fan? No, I am. I'm not one of those. Cra- I have friends that are they're crazy fans that are going. To oh like yeah, well, but you got shit. you got Trekkies, you've got but Star en- Wars people. Yeah, but I enjoy the movies. I, I I'm yeah. a fan of, of of the movies. Yeah, I'm the same way. I enjoy the movies. I'm not a fanatic. I can't quote everything. Right. I like them enough that I play Star Wars games that I'll buy a lightsaber, but you do, but you, uh, you know I mean? I like them that much, but I don't know everything. And I, I, right. I, I don't go crazy with it, but I have had those moments where I thought I had the force. Okay. Please, please. Yeah. It, it yeah. I'm, I'm curious too. So I've had those moments. And again, we're going back into Mike's dream world. Jesus oh, Christ. If it's only the there would be. Oh, it is, and it really is. <laughs> I've had those moments where Dream Mike and Dream World for me, um, my dreams are so lucid sometimes, so real, mm-hmm. so like I could reach out and touch everything in my dream, mm-hmm. and 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 I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but I've had dreams where I've had the force where I can literally move stuff with my mind, and I've uh, had them before too. Yeah, but yeah. I've gone so far as to when I've woken up from that dream, it's been so real that I have looked at something in my room, <laughs> reached my hand out, and tried. He's trying to butter his toast with just his mind. What just happened in my dream? <laughs> and there is a moment where I think it's going to happen. Right. 
And Laura just asked, um, was I drunk? No, these are not drunk <laughs> endeavors. These are completely sober. <laughs> um, where I think I could do it. And I actually have a moment where I strain and then I come back to reality and go, what the fuck are you doing? Knock right. that off. Um, <laughs> I've had dreams where I, uh, in my dream, I thought I was a witch where I'm like, I like say a spell and make things like rise up. And when I've woken up, I literally will like, look at like, even like my dog and like halfway awake, I'll look at my dog and be like, Levitate. I thought you were going to look at him and go, levitate? you're a gremlin. You try to levitate your dog? Yeah. Does it ever work? Well, obviously not. <laughs> you know, not obviously. <laughs> How great would that be if you were like, it happened. Watch this. <laughs> yeah, I, I would for Look sure in the background. On, the dog's floating in the background. I would for sure be on Facebook Live. They're like, guys, look what I did. <laughs> look at what I can do. Um, yeah, anyway. look what I can do. <laughs> you know, there's, there's brooms. Of, remember the people were standing the brooms up a couple months ago? So, yeah, yeah. Yes, and I did that twice. <laughs> once at home and once at work. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, light as a feather, stiff as a board. Yes, um, that's so, my movie. But, <laughs> but with, as far as like the force and everything, like I, I there are YouTube videos out there where you can like go and watch where people have tried to recreate the lightsabers and recreate all this stuff that's from the movie. But you can't because, it, like you said, it's it's energy. It's these right. energy forces that create the lightsaber. It's these energy forces well, that create the ability to do this stuff. And at least as of now, within our society, within our universe, right now, that is not possible. Well, the interesting thing, um, it's it's energy. But if you think back to the movie uh, back in the ninth, in late 90s, The Phantom Menace, oh. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about Spaceballs. No, not Spaceballs. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. The, the Phantom Menace uh, <laughs> introduced the idea of these I, mi microscopic creatures called the Midichlorians, Midichlorians, that connect the characters to the Force. You remember this? No. So, and I'll read this. This, this is a... Uh, like I said, I'm a fan of the movies, but not that much of a fan. This is a passage from uh, from the Wiki article. It says, Mitochondria... Now, they're referring to mitochondria, which is something that we have in us, okay. um, which is very similar to these midichlorians in the movie. This is mitochondria probably had something to do with the beginnings of life and how one cell decided to become two cells with a little help from this other little creature who came in without whom it couldn't exist. And it's, a re it's really a way of saying we have hundreds of little creatures who live on us and without them, we would all die. There wouldn't be any life. They are necessary for us we are necessary for them and this is basically the same idea that was introduced in the movie uh in the phantom menace with these microscopic creatures that were living on the bodies of the um the the force susceptible characters and they basically were the the driving force so to speak behind the energy that would become the force in the movie really yeah i don't remember that i've Okay, and and apparently uh, Lara knows about this stuff, and I'm I'm trying to Google it, and I did so I'm gonna leave hers up there for a second while I copy it. Why is Lara um, so much cooler than you, Mike? There, that is a question that has plagued man for many many years. That'll be next week's show, and uh, <laughs> I would like to debunk that thought process. I am way cooler. Uh, um, have you not seen that I have a VR headset? <laughs> I thought you said she does too. Okay, we're not gonna bring that up. What is wrong with you? Wow. Why are you she not on my it, side? She, she got it on the yard sale website. Why are you not on my side? Why are you so against me right now? Because I'm mad at both of you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of the beach thing. I got you. Yeah. Anyway, so let's go back to anyway. My so, my the Glorians, um uh, are are for the, the Jedi's. And but we have similar things. I would love for one day for us to find out we could do some of this shit because of what's inside of our bodies. Well, and some people are are very aware of it, and some people aren't, which is also part of this the movie. If you think back, uh, and and Lucas is talking here about um, how he's comparing the Force to yoga, and saying that um, any character can 
in, in the movie and any person in real life can do yoga. Any character in the movie can use the force. Um, some characters there are force intuitive, like Luke Skywalker. He knew he was, uh, or he had the force and he could use it. But there were other characters like the Han Solo character that did use the force occasionally, but it was sort of unconsciously using it. And he really didn't believe that he was able to do it. So therefore he didn't often do it. And it's, it's a lot of, a lot about belief in, in yourself and about belief in the ability to use the force, which is, if you go back to the original star Wars, or actually it was the, uh, it was uh, empire strikes back when he's, when Skywalker's with Yoda yeah. in the, in the cave, that's what that whole scene is about. Yoda is trying to teach him that you've got to believe that you can do it in order for you to do it. If you don't truly believe it, you won't be able to do it. Now, I might start watching Star Wars. This is pretty like solid facts right here. Please do me a favor. Watch Spaceballs first. <laughs> anyway, Fine. I have to put these images out there. Please. Spaceballs is such a great movie. Um, but it's kind of the same thing. It's just dark, with wieners. Dark Wait, just, yeah, just with wieners. Um, I love but- wieners. I didn't Mm-mm-mm. know that was going to happen, Rick. I didn't know that was going to happen. She's drunk know. and she's got her dog. Anything can happen. She loves weeders. Anyway, <laughs> so do you think that uh, this whole force thing? So uh, I forget what movie I was watching recently, but they discussed this. I totally forgot about this because you don't hear about it anymore. Mm. But that whole thought process, like a mother or a father, uh, their kid is trapped underneath a car or trapped in a well. And right. there's some Im- unmovable object that mm-hmm. a human being shouldn't be able to move, mm-hmm. but they're able to move because that adrenaline <laughs> goes through them. Yeah. And that almost sounds like the force in terms of channeling every bit of your force, your energy yeah, into being able to lift a car, move an Im- unmovable yeah. object yeah. because somebody is in dire need of it. Yeah. You're not moving it from a distance. You're not putting your hand out and having the thing right. float in the air, but you are physically moving something that you have no right and or normally no ability right. to be able to move. Once that moment ends, once everybody right. is safe, you go over and try to move that again. There's no possible way you're going to be able to do it. Right. Yeah. And, so and that, people go ahead. Go, no, no, go ahead. I'll say people write that off to, to adrenaline, which I'm sure is true. That plays a part in it. Um, but I don't know there isn't uh, something more than just adrenaline. But who do, who can say that adrenaline, as we know it, adrenaline, isn't a part of that ability to do that? If you're able Could to be. control adrenaline in some sort of way or some sort of different manner, could it possibly be the, the, the factor that enables this? Like, you yeah. know, I mean, we look at adrenaline in a certain manner, uh, maybe look at it in a different way. I'm just I'm just trying to think outside the box yeah. in terms of ways that we've seen human beings do e- extraordinary things that we explain in a certain manner, but could possibly be this whole force thing. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Um, and, and there's there's comparisons of the force um, again in or or not comparisons of it. There are. I guess uh, examples of the same type of thing in various science fiction and fantasy films and um, TV shows and things like that. Right. Um, and and it will sometimes be called magic. It won't be called the force. It'll be called magic. Mm-hmm. It, it, you, know, you can name it whatever you want. Um, the depiction of the force in Star Wars, you know, for example, has been compared to the magic in Harry Potter. Love because, Harry Potter. Because Harry Potter has his wand. Um, he and goes. he makes things move. <laughs> I, sorry, I really, really sorry, set that up, didn't I? Sorry, everybody listening. You walked she, into that, Rick. Like, just she, loves that, wieners. she loves just, wieners. Just set that right up. You didn't anyway, walk you, you get the idea. What I'm, yeah, yeah, you get the idea. What I'm saying though is, is instead of using your, you know, your hand and and shaking your hand at the at the thing and making it move, he's using a a, a pointer or a wand. But it's say it's the same thing. It's magic. <laughs> yeah. People listening to the podcast version can't see that Jenna just made a, a face when you said he's using his wand. She's That's drunk. Harry Potter. That is an American staple. He was People like love him. He was like an 10. American staple. It was in Britain, British. 
Right, but Americans embraced him. Of yeah. course. I, I've never ever seen one of those movies. No, I'm sorry, you, I saw one movie. One it was never, like the, okay. It was I like might the have to cut you off. movie. I might have to put you in the waiting room of your own show. Because <laughs> if you have not seen the Harry Potter listen, films. Listen, Karen and I have tried two or three times. Because we because I like I hear people. It's talk not like about a it, sexual like, position that you guys tried two or three times and said no. no. This is Harry Potter. But but what happens is invariably we'll turn the movie on and get through the first fifteen minutes and fall asleep. Hi, right. We're gonna watch it at bedtime. It, yeah, it you gotta matter. watch. You gotta it watch doesn't. Hermione. It's it's That's it my best bores the shit out of me. How does Harry Potter like, bore the shit out of you? Yeah, you un-American. Yeah, it just. I, I can't do it. I haven't read the books. I saw one of the movies. I went went to one of the movies. I think it was the uh, Phoenix Order of the Phoenix or whatever the hell it was called. Well, that's I think I, the problem. You I think I saw like that this. one in like two thousand four or five ish, something like that. But I didn't. Uh, it, it wasn't me that wanted to go to that one, and I just said, "All right, whatever." And I went and saw it, and it was all right. Like it was, you know. Look at Harry. Look at how happy Harry is. Rick. Look at Hermione. Hermione should have been with Harry, but this douchebag over here was with her. It's them freaking redheads. The freaking redheads. Maybe he had a bigger one. Oh. Is that how guys with bigger ones sound? <laughs> I had a crush on Hermione for the longest freaking time and still do to this day. Yeah, see, that was... That was the other thing too. That they were. It was a kids thing when I was an adult, so I didn't get into it. Uh, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying. Like when that all came out, I was probably 30 years old or something. Like it just it wasn't okay. my thing. That's all right. When it came out, I was in fourth grade. We went uh, and watched it at the movie theater on a Saturday. My whole class and I spilled my popcorn. I remember. Wow. But Harry Potter definitely falls. <laughs> I'm trying to go past that. Harry I know. Potter. Definitely falls into this. Uh, wow. Um, I'm going to put that up on the screen real fast. Gingers have no souls. <laughs> That's interesting. You're one of your best friends is a ginger. That's why I can agree with that. That's, and not why, be insulting. <laughs> That's I was with that, her today. That's why I could agree. That's why it's a thing. Yeah. Gingers have no souls. Wow. Uh, that I don't know if that's been scientifically proven, but. Yeah, so Harry Potter, definitely something Rick should see. Um, if everybody agrees, pre- please tweet at him. What is your Twitter, Rick? <laughs> at Paradelphia. At Paradelphia. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I will try once again for the fourth time <laughs> to to watch this movie. Yeah, she, this is his first. Mo- There's like 12 movies. I haven't even seen the one yet, the first one yet. Listen, uh, I ma- will say the first one is the worst one mm, yeah i bet you it is it was good enough to get people involved in the next few it, no no, it, no. It, but it gradually gets better it gradually gets better the first one <clears throat> it's good enough that it grabbed people that's what it was yeah, yeah. it I, gets I, better after that but rick is in quarantine <laughs> and actually before you got on jenna we were discussing how we need to bring back jenna's bees mm, or whatever right. it was called jenna's where you were bees, doing right. movie reviews yeah, because you still have Tromeo and Juliet. I do. It's right. Well, it's actually right on my TV. I was looking at it today. Right. So maybe we need to do Jenna B. Jenna's bees, but we also need to do Rick Pruitt. Watch his Harry Potter. <laughs> a weekly uh, 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 check in, not a, not a review, just a check in <coughs> for how far he's gotten and what he thinks. It could be yeah. very short. It doesn't have to be long, like 15 minutes a week. Not even got, that. It could be like five. 15. It could be like five minutes, so it doesn't interfere with too much of the show. No, I'm just the movie. Oh, the movie. <laughs> no, no, no. No, you're watching a whole fucking movie a week. Yeah, right? you watch fifteen Knock minutes. Knock that off. It. You're watching a whole movie. You're in quarantine. <laughs> Shut up. You have no reason not to. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, I'll give it a shot. There what you the go. Hell? And and Laura, who's who's hanging in with us, and she's our resident uh, Harry Potter aficionado. Says that the first was definitely the weakest link. It yeah. was. They were. They were immature. Definitely. Hmm. All right. They were young. And we'll they have Jenna watch baseball. They didn't know how to use their wands yet. 
Uh, what is that? I, that's what she, that's her husband knows what that sound is. <laughs> that's all I've got to say. He definitely knows what that sound is. We'll bring him out, Mass. <laughs> what does this mean? All of a sudden, you see his pants drop. I know what this means. <laughs> Yo. She has to that's turn funny. off the camera. We just hear the audio. Turn yeah. it to the. Yeah. You, you hear you hear Jenna yelling pew 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 pew. <laughs> pew, pew. Yo, I love it. I love the sex talk. Wow. <laughs> All right. That that's uh, where hot tea with Jenna B comes in. I don't know how to recover from that. All right. So anyway, let's let's take our uh, our next break here, and we'll start uh, start wrapping things up. All right. All right. We're back in a few. Oh wait, I'm not ready, Rick. Well, all he right. wasn't we're ready. We're gonna Say hang for a few. Say it again. Now we'll be back in a few. <laughs> all right, we're back here on Paradelphia on Toxic Radio. Get ready to wrap up the evening. It's been uh, been interesting. We've talked about a few different topics. We've gone gone from the missing four one one, you know, interdimensional thing to Bigfoot to uh, the Star Wars Force to Jen Swand. <laughs> Jen has a wand? Wait a second. When did this yeah. happen? Well, yeah, on, the br- dude, on it's break. Purple. It's purple. purple. Wow. Designer. I, I, I've heard people call it the purple microphone. Um, she, she shopped for it on Amazon last night. Yep. You can find anything on Amazon. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Grind it overnight. Used $4.99. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you did prime it overnight. Primed it real good, didn't you? I love the sax talk. Oh, my. <laughs> Do you? Do you? Wow. Uh, well, I'd uh, like to say, I don't know if anyone saw on the Paradelphia or if they follow jumps, but this Saturday, mm-hmm. we're doing, well, it is as of right now, unless Doug, Doug literally was supposed to call me and he ain't, so I don't know what's going on, but still, it's happening. It's happening <laughs> this Saturday is we're going to do a ghost tour of Salem County mm. virtual ghost tour. So you, it'll be streaming and I'll share it on Paradelphia. It'll be streaming on Jersey unique minds, paranormal society's page. Like I said, I'll share it on Paradelphia. Even if you're not from Salem County, like it's really interesting. And I think if it goes well and people respond to it, well, we'll go into Gloucester County. So, so how exactly is this working? Is somebody going on site with a streaming camera? Yes. Okay. It's going to be just me and Doug. Um, I'm going to give like the history aspect of where we're going to be. And then Doug's going to give like the ghost aspect and the hauntings and things like that. So we're going to be social distancing. We'll be wearing our masks. It's going to start at 530. So we don't. I'm going to punch Mike in the butthole. Um, <laughs> wow. That's a third date thing. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so it's going to be, it's all going to be legal. Everywhere we're going is a uh, public property and all of that good stuff. So uh, it's do, fun no, be, no, no B and E do no one, what? do one thing illegal. No, <laughs> no B and E's, no, no B&E's. illegal things. I don't want Phil to find out because you know, God forbid. Yeah. Laura's curfew? asking if we're on curfew. Are we on curfew? I don't even know. I think nobody knows. Nobody knows. He's, he's saying stay at home order, but he's opening boardwalks and beaches. So right. They don't, really... they don't know what the hell they're doing. They're like, stay at home. By the way, parks, uh, all these other places are open. Stay at home. Stay at home. But, but hey, look, funnel cake. Funnel stay at home cake. unless you're going to spend money. Then you can go out. Well, mark my words. He's prepping. For the week, for but everything will be open. AC will be open by January, by June fifteenth. I we've had this discussion. Mm. Just remember I, the movie Jaws. Yep. I'm These beaches will be open. Lining up to be a hot lunch. <laughs> <laughs> People are lining up to be a hot lunch. Probably. Good luck with that. Yes. Good luck indeed. Good luck. Godspeed. Ah. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna wrap things up for the evening, but it's been uh, it's been interesting, it's been fun. And yes, we'll, uh, we'll come back next week with an all new topic, which I have no idea. I just came up with this one three hours ago, so <laughs> he did. Uh, you guys don't know. I got the text message. I have I was, no idea. Hey, what's, I was uh, doing, I was doing was like, yard work all week. I I've been he's, busy. He's been planting seeds, planting, 
tulips. Yeah. Digging out stumps of tree of uh, bushes. Digging out stumps. He's it been playing fun. with playing with his bush. <laughs> Trimming the bush. Trimming the bush. Oh my! All right, this is this is devolving way too far here. Is All it right. far enough though? It's never far enough. <laughs> Wait, the sex. Real, real what? Did you say butt sex? What? Real fast. <laughs> so Jenna, I don't know why, but the angle that her camera's at, where she's sitting, I if it wasn't for the fan in the background on her video, I would swear she was on some like rock stars tour bus. It, it does look like a tour bus, yeah. Right, doesn't it? Like right yeah. where the window's at in the couch. Right. I would swear she's on a tour bus. I would say it was probably with Post Malone. No, and, Guns uh, and Roses. I remembered. By you're the not way. getting on Guns N' Roses Take tour bus. Me down to the Paradise City where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. The grass is green means you're going to smoke weed with the girls, by the way. Yeah. What? You, you didn't live in the 80s. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> you're going to you're going to smoke weed and you're going to have sex with the ladies. Congratulations. <laughs> Mazel tov. Mazel tov. <laughs> I have no idea. Now I gotta stop singing it. No, keep singing it. The no, people love it. it. It's just erotic. Not, just never tell her the meaning of the words. Right. What so sweet did. child of mine mean? Oh, you don't want to oh, know. Yeah, you don't want to know. Keep that in your sweet, sweet, innocent mind. It involves butt yeah. stuff. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Uh, uh, and, and Laura says I'll do it. I don't know what that means. Wow, I know, Laura. I know oh. there's a delay, so I don't think she meant what you just said. C- congratulations came, to Mike then. It came, up, it came up at just the right point. Yo, crack it up. <laughs> All right. I, I think that's enough for one night. There you Let's go. Wrap things up here. So uh once again for uh for Mike, for Jenna B. I'm Rick. We are Paradelphia. Thank God we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs>